As promised, I'm back again. And this time, I could have done this yesterday, but I just didn't think about doing it. Or I've been thinking about it, but not sure. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm going to give a, a very, very brief summary of the lecture that I had attended uh, a couple nights ago at the Masjid. And it was, uh, it was supposed to be trilingual, uh, Somali, Arabic, and English, but there was no English until I actually requested it. But anyway, the lecture was pretty much exclusively in Somali because there was pretty much all Somalis present except for me. I was the only, I and uh, uh, sister who was originally from Ethiopia were the only non-Somalis there. But anyway, so I requested a summary, and uh, so this will include some of the questions that were asked. But basically, this visiting imam from, uh, I don't remember where he came from, I don't know, Minnesota or, or where, but, uh, but he basically talked about uh, stuff relating to families. Now, most of it does not apply to me because, for one thing, if I have kids, I don't know, no one has told me. And if I have a husband, I don't know, no one has told me yet. I'm waiting to hear about that one. But that's for another day. But anyway, he talked about the need for parents to be more involved in their children's education, especially their Islamic education. And that if there are uh, locations for Islamic education outside of the home, for instance, in a madrasa or, or Islamic school, or in the masjid itself. Sorry, that noise in the background, that's Mila running back and forth at full, full throttle. She does that from time to time. <laughs> Crazy cat. But anyway, so talked about the need for not only getting involved in your children's education, but actually supporting the Islamic education that is available in your area. For instance, if uh, if there are classes only available in the masjid, then you support you support the masjid. You uh, make a donation to, uh, to support the learning activities, whether it might be uh, buying a if the teacher who's who's volunteering and not actually getting paid to do it, you know, they may need to buy supplies or uh, books or uh, ink for the printer or, or whatever, but. Uh, it's one way of supporting Islamic education or putting children in an Islamic school that may be separate from or attached to a masjid. We have one here in Des Moines at the Des Moines Islamic Center. That's uh, that's a, the largest masjid in uh, my city, but I don't go there because uh, I'm not sure how accessible it is by bus. I've never tried it but uh, they have a, a school there that goes up to the 8th grade. But the Masjid Anur where I attend just has classes in the Masjid which I attend with the kids because there, there isn't really much for uh, adults at this time. But uh, So that was one thing he talked about and then he talked about just you know teaching kids uh, what is right, what is wrong, what is halal, what is haram. And one uh, one person asked, and I got a translation from a sister I was sitting next to who who understands Somali and, and told me a little bit in uh, what English she knew, but one person asked about uh, body piercings and tattoos. And he did not exclude, you know, ear piercing, which is, you know, that he did not mention that at all, but I don't know if he excluded it in his commentary, but uh, he said that uh, tattoos that are not of the henna, like uh, what remains of my henna, you can't really see that much because it's fading out, but uh, any other tattoo, if, if you're a Muslim and you get that done, you have committed a serious sin because it is, it is considered uh, unnatural. It is not something that uh, Allah Davis, but uh, you know, because I've only been Muslim a little, you know, 
it'll be two years at the end of this month, you know, because I had mine done years before I converted, you know, that that sin was forgiven when uh, when I said my shahada. But uh, so anything, you know, anything that is not natural to the body or just just a natural act, like, you know, he didn't say specifically that piercing the ears is haram, you know, that's, you know, someone would have to do research on that, but, you know, people, but so many women and men get their ears pierced, but, uh, you know, if women properly uh, cover their ears, uh, no one would know it anyway, unless their earrings are loud, you know, those big dangly things, but, uh, that was one question that was asked by uh, by one of the attendees of this uh, lecture. Then he also talked about uh, you know just related things, or you know, parenting that that parents need to be uh, a consistent with discipline. You know, not harsh. You know, you don't you don't beat the crap out of your kid but you have to discipline them in a way that is consistent and in accordance with the uh, Islamic teaching. You know, you know, that says, he didn't talk about it specifically, but time out, which is a common thing that's now used here in the, in the U.S. and uh, I'm not sure other countries have this thing called time out where you tell a, a kid to sit in a certain spot and they have to stay in that spot in that spot for a specific period of time and if they get m and if they move or do something other than what you tell them to do then you extend that period that they have to sit in that spot so that's called time out that you know, you could uh, you you could tell a kid that if they do not do what they're supposed to do then you can say you will not get this or you will not do that or something like that but to basically beat the crap out of your kid, that is, that is beyond, to me that's beyond haram, that you just don't do that. Because that is a form of oppression of a child that's taking away the child's right to a proper treatment. And, uh, you know, that goes into respecting you know, each other's rights, the spouses have to respect each other's rights. You know, because that makes uh, that makes a good example for the kids to learn, and uh, you know, and as far as uh, having kids, you know, the Muslim Uma is supposed to grow, and part of that is, you know, parents are you know, pe couples are supposed to have kids if they are physically capable of it. But then you know, some people might complain that it, you know, you know, men are forcing women and you know getting pregnant too many times too often if they're unable to care for the kids or you know like in Somalia right now there's a serious famine going on and the UN just today just jacked up the famine affected area to estimate four million people and I'm not sure what the percentage of the actual s population of Somalia but that's fluctuating as people are getting the heck out of Dodge and Running across the border into Kenya or going to uh, from the outlying areas into Mogadishu, but uh, people will question that. But if it's if it's you know the couples talk about it, talk about how you know they want to space their children apart for the comfort of the mother, and as 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 well as for the comfort of the children and for the ease of the husband in supporting them, you know, if the, if the, his wife does not work. And, uh, so that has to be done, you know, you know, planning your family has to be done in accordance with the Quran and the, and the Sunnah or tradition of, or teachings of, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him. And, uh, he also, I could tell from just some of the speech that was not translated for me that he gave examples from the companions of the prophet you know, may Allah be pleased with them all and uh, yeah, I could tell that simply because he mentioned names that I picked up or he would say the 
things like, you know, when he mentions a companion of the Prophet, he would say, Radiallahu anhu, or for a man, or Radiallahu anha, for a woman. For instance, if he talked about Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Or when he talked about the Prophet himself, he would say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, may, may Allah you know, you know, be peace of Allah be on, on uh, the Prophet. You know, something like that. That's how I could tell when he was uh, mentioning a specific name. Because you know, I, I could pick up those taglines that are said after that name. But uh, that's that was the majority of uh, his lecture was about parenting and family life and uh, teaching the children, supporting Islamic education and uh, so I just thought I just I wanted to pass this on as much of that as I could. I wish I had more of it that was put into English for me but uh, I didn't get any more than that. But I hope this is a benefit to all of you who are watching this and uh, so I'll come up with something later. Who knows? You know, Friday comes up. I'll do a khutbah summary, inshallah. And uh, as always, uh, in any of my speech summaries, anything that I say that's wrong is totally my bad. Anything that's good comes from Allah because Allah is the source of all good. So thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum, Dovidzanya, and Miyasar Mila.